So yeah, welcome aboard. Now, we're sitting here on the holding point for runway 27 left at Heathrow. The runway's just out to our left there. Uh, in a little bit, we are going to taxi our way onto the runway, take off, and do a couple of circuits. Uh, before we do that, though, I'll give you a bit of a cockpit briefing. So I'll go through first the dis oh sorry, first the controls that we have. Then I'll go through our displays, and then I'll go through the rest of the systems that are on board the aircraft. Okay. So starting off with our controls, ideally the first thing we're going to want to control the aircraft in is turning to the left to get on the runway. Correct. Mm -hmm. So for that, we're going to use the steering tiller, which basically steers the nose wheel. Perfect. So have a bit of a control of that. What does that do? Left. Left, yep. And then... Right. Easy. Alright, awesome. So we'll use that to line up on the runway. Now once we go for our takeoff, we obviously can't use the tiller for steering, as that's going to you know, be too sensitive for our fast speed. So we'll use the rudder pedals instead. So right pedal will turn us right, left pedal will turn us left. Yep. That's it. Give it a push as hard as you can on, the, on one of the pedals. Just so you can see how far they actually go in. Can they go further? There you go. Oh, yeah. Yep, see, so quite a bit of travel on them, okay? You probably won't need to use all of it, though, so don't stress too much. Now, once we get up in the air, just using the yoke to fly, so do a bit of a control check with that. I'm sure you're aware of what those controls do, so you've got nose up, obviously, then nose down, and then you've got your roll. So you can see that roll controls are quite light, aren't they? Once again, they're sensitive, probably won't need all of that, okay? All right, down here's our throttle quadrant, so you've got your thrust levers, more power, less power, and then you have your reverse thrust levers at the front for... Mm -hmm when we land. So I'll get you to have a go at deploying those reverse thrust levers for me right now. So pull them back, you feel one click, and then keep moving back, and that's fully deployed. Alright, you can chuck them back forwards. Alright, awesome. We have our flap lever over here, so you know what the flaps are? Yep. Yeah. So basically to operate this flap lever, you just lift it up, you move it back and forward to whatever setting you need. Now, if you look over, you can see there's two gates here and here. While that's up, won't pass through. So you're just going to drop it in and then just lift it the way you want to move, okay? Okay. So for this takeoff, we're going to use flap 5. Do you want to try setting that for me? Awesome. Nicely done. And, you know, with most of these controls, if it doesn't move with, you know, light force, chances are it's not being done the right way. Sometimes we see people, uh, no, this won't be you, but sometimes we see people like really trying to yank it across. <laughs> it's like, okay, just calm down. <laughs> Alright, on this side, we've got our speed brake. So, do you know what the speed brake is? Is it the thing that comes up? Yeah, on up the, wings? the top of the wings. Yeah. So, when the aircraft touches down, that speed brake are the spoilers that flip up off the top of the wings. So, they're basically the aero brakes. Okay. So, this one's going to be fairly straightforward. While we're coming in for our final approach for landing, I will arm it. Once the aircraft touches down, it'll automatically deploy for us. So, not too much to worry about with that one. Now, down here, there are trim wheels. So the yeah. trim essentially stabilizes the aircraft's nose position, whether it's high or low. Um, so basically, this aircraft can do that trim control automatically, but that tab up there is you know, how you would manually adjust it, what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So I'm just gonna quickly trim the aircraft for takeoff. You will see them spinning quite a bit in flight. That's completely normal, okay? Yeah. You know, with all the different power changes and attitudes, it'll change you know, every couple of seconds. Down here is our parking brake. You can see it's currently engaged. So to disengage it, pop your feet up on the top of both pedals and with your toes, press down, okay? There you go, and then release. You feel how the pedals lever up the top, don't they? Yeah. So those are the wheel brakes on the aircraft. All right, so that's our controls. Going good so far? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we'll go into our displays now. So you're pretty familiar with a lot of these displays, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So you've got your PFD, primary flight display. What's that? The... Um well, that one's altitude. Altitude. And that's your airspeed. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you've got your artificial horizon, so wings, nose, ground, sky. Yep. So fairly straightforward. There's our nav display, so essentially a moving map with a compass overlay. Mm -hmm. And then our multifunction display is here and here. They can show engine or system data. I'm just going to keep it on our basic engine gauges. So yep. N1, sitting at about 20% N1. So that's just our idle. As we power up, you'll see it go up higher. Engine temperatures, we've got our fuel flows, and then our fuel quantities as well. So we've got about 7 tonne of fuel on board. Okay. So, these are going to be some of our other systems. We probably won't mess with them too much, but, you know, may as well have a look at them. We have our FMCs down here, our flight management computers. So if you're the captain while you're off, you know, doing the pre-flight, getting a coffee, all that sort of stuff, I'll be in here programming that with all the takeoff, landing data, en route data, yeah. and all that stuff is programmed in at the moment. Okay. 
Down here, we've got our pedestal. So this has most of our radio stack. So our radios for comms, so for talking to ATC, and then our navs for navigating. We also have our transponder back here. So do you know what the transponder is? Basically, it's a system that broadcasts our position. So when the transponder's on, air traffic control can see us on their radar. All right. So moving on, up here is what we call our mode control panel. This middle part is just our autopilot settings, so things like mm -hmm. speed, heading, altitude. You probably had a little play around with that, right? Yeah. And then on either side of here, you see how we've got some gate, oh, some um, instruments that are kind of the same. These are for adjusting our screens. Yeah. Now, up the top is our overhead. So the overhead has all of the systems that we can control and monitor on board. Um, it's quite a bit at first glance, but they have tried to categorize it to make it a little bit easier. So. In aviation, we do these things called scan flows, which are a very s sort of uh, structured way of going through and checking everything. In this aircraft, we do what's called a waterfall flow. So you'd start from the left, and you'd scan through each column, and that's how they have basically designed it. So in each column, every panel is a separate system. So for example, your fuel pumps are all in one panel. Yeah. All of your electrical buses are in one. All of your hydraulic pumps are in one. Anti-ice, heating, air conditioning, pressurization. So if you know what system you need to look for, all the controls and, you know, gauges for it will be in one location, okay? Okay. All right, so that's a, you know, speed run through. <laughs> any questions about any of that? Um, no? No. Any questions from before that you wanted to ask that haven't been answered? Well, so the battery yep. is to turn on all the displays and lights in the cockpit, isn't it? It is. So what you'll normally do is the battery will turn on the uh, electronics. However, the battery will only last so long, so you don't want to run on it for too long. Yeah. Normally what you'll do is you use the battery to turn on the APU, the auxiliary power unit, which is essentially a miniature jet engine in the back. Okay. That's self-sufficient. Once that's powered, you basically get you know, energy almost running like a generator. That'll then power everything, and that'll power the starter motors for the um, engines as well. And then once the engines are on, then they'll generate the power. Yeah. So you're right, the battery does sort of turn everything on. But after a little while, it'll just go onto the engines. Okay. You'll get a warning after about 45 seconds if the battery's on and it's yeah. the only thing powering everything. Mm -hmm. Very annoying. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, no. No? All right, sweet. So let's get going. Okay. Now, before you get on the runway, we've got to do a couple of uh, checks. They're called our lineup checks. The first thing we'll do is we'll turn on all of our landing lights. So all four of these switches, can you flick them forwards? Good. Now we always turn the landing lights on, whether it's you know day or night as we enter the runway. One, makes us a lot more visible. And two, if there's other aircraft that may want to you know taxi across the runway or there's an aircraft coming in, they can spot us a lot easier as well. Yeah. Next up, we'll get our strobe light on. So flick that one forwards. So those are our high intensity flashing lights. Yeah. We don't want to have them on on the ground, but once again on the runway, we'll turn them on. Mm -hmm. Next up, our transponder will go from standby to TARA. So on standby, it doesn't do anything. When you go to TARA, we're now broadcasting our position. Okay. Last thing we'll do, our fasten seatbelt sign. You see how it's off right now? Yeah. Turn it on. It should usually be on during the taxi. And then just before we enter the runway, you're going fl to flick it off and on nice and quick. So okay. can you do that one for me? That lets the cabin crew in the back know we're good to go. Normally, it'll be followed by a call, uh, cabin crews, arm doors, and cross check. Yep. Okay, and that's our lineup checks complete. Okay. All right, let's actually get on the runway. So, with the steering, you'll use the tiller, so left hand on that. I'll get your right hand on the thrust levers. Watch the thrust gauge for the moment. So, the needle's on 20%, right? We just want to bump it up to 30%. Can you see where that is? Yeah. So, just gently push those levers forwards, and you'll see a little line come up. That's where you're setting your thrust to, so pop that on the 30% marker and just leave it there, okay? You see the needle will come up, and that's where it'll stay. Now your power's set. So, eyes out front, can you see our taxi line out in front of us? You see how there's a yellow line that branches out to the left from the original one? Yeah. We're going to follow that one, okay? That should line okay. us up on the runway. Now, runway 27 left is uh, pretty long, so don't stress out too much about coming to a stop straight away. What we'll try and do is line up on that center line as best we can, okay? Yeah. 
Now it's a little bit trippy, so just get a bit of a feel of where the aircraft is moving and try and adjust based on that. Oh wow, perfect. Alright, so taking over, I have control. I'm just going to bring us to a stop. So that was very quick, you actually pretty much put us right onto the centre of the runway, pointing right down the middle. Uh, what you may find is, it feels like you're looking a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Yeah. Yeah. So where the aircraft is facing is a little bit inwards for us. So one little trick I like to use, you see this glare shield here? See how it goes from angle to straight right there? Mm -hmm. Use that as a bit of a crosshair, just sit normally in your seat, look out, and does it line up pretty close to where the center line is? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll use that to sort of align ourselves with the runway as we come in, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to run you through our takeoff procedure, and then once we've done that, you're going to get us up in the air. So with the takeoff procedure, first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase power up to 40% this time. Mm -hmm. Now, once you've got it up there, you're waiting for me to call stable. When I say stable, you're going to tap that little black button down there. Yep. That is going to activate our auto throttles. So once you press that, the aircraft will set takeoff thrust for us. Once we've got takeoff thrust, we're going to start building up some speed, so you're going to keep us nice and straight. What are you going to use? Rudders. That's it. Now with that, pop your toes just on the bottom of the pedals. One thing we don't want to do is accidentally touch the brakes as yeah. we're rolling. So you'll be steering, we'll be building up speed, and then I'll make a couple of call outs. So I'll call 80 knots, that's just a speed check. The aircraft will call V1, don't stress too much about that. And then when I call rotate, do you know what you're going to do? Well, there's only one thing to do, eh? Yeah. So we'll pull up, just make sure it comes up nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Keep holding it back. And what we're going to try and do is, once we're off the runway, we're going to try and bring the nose up to 15 degrees above the horizon. So you see where 10 is, right? Yeah. 12 and a half, 15. So it's the okay. second line above 10, okay? Quite a few steps there I'll run you through as we go. But are you all happy with that? Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Let's get to it. So when you're ready, let's first increase thrust up to 40%. Oh, you guys ready in the back as well? Yep. <laughs> okay, very good. Just leave it there. Stable. So tap that button now. Do I use my... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just whatever. There you go. Thrust set. Eyes out front. Steering with the pedals. So now, just try and hold that center line. See how we're drifting a little bit to the left? So press that right pedal in a bit. There you go. See how it is pretty sluggish at first? Yeah. As we build up speed, it'll get more sensitive, okay? 80 knots, speed check. Okay, doing good. Okay, we're almost there. Rotate. That's it, good, nice and gentle. Okay, keep holding that back pressure. Look down at your instruments. So we're passing through 10. There's 12 and a half, and there's 15. Now just relax on the controls. Just let them come back to neutral. Alright, good. So we're taking off. Now we're going to get our landing gear up. So this lever here, you want to pull it out, up, and then in. There you go. Gear's coming up. We'll also get our flap up to one. Very good. You can see we're already above a thousand feet. So what we're going to do is now push our nose down to 10 degrees so we can build up some speed, okay? Once you get down to that 10 degree line, just completely relax on the controls. You see the nose will try and go up, but then the trim will kick in and it will stabilize it. All right, good. Let's bring our flap up to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to level off at 3,000 feet, okay? Yep. So we're at about 2,400 at the moment. To do that, to hold straight and level, normally we go down to about 5 degrees. So do you see the big line down there? Yeah. Yeah, I would start pushing for it about now. By the time we get down to that line, we should be at 3,000 feet. Beautiful. So just assess your altitude. Have a little look. So you can see on the right here, this is your vertical speed indicator. See how it's still angled up a little bit? Yeah. Just need to bump the nose down a tiny bit more, okay? There you go, and then relax. Takes a couple of seconds to kick in. See how it's going down a bit more. And a little bit more nose down, I'd say. And then relax. And there we go. Perfect. Look at that. All right, so have a little look outside. So we're heading out to the west. So at the moment, we're heading away from London, but we're going to start heading back towards it in a second. 
So get your controls. We're going to do a left-hand turn. Just roll to the left. You don't have to pull back at all. But just start banking in. I'll let you know when we're in a good bank angle, okay? All right, good. So bring the controls back to the middle now. So do you know how to read the bank angle indicator? Uh, no. All right, you're going to learn today. So up on the top of the PFD here, see how there's a little arrow that sort of yeah. angles out? Each one of those little lines is 10 degrees of bank angle. So you've got 10, 20, and then the big one is 30. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do you reckon our bank angle is at the moment? Um, 21, 2. 22, I'd say. Yeah, 21 or 22. Good. And that's pretty standard after most takeoffs due to the, you know, departure paths. You've obviously been on a domestic flight before, right? Yeah. You notice that after they take off, sometimes they bank quite a bit. Once they get up to cruising level, they won't go over five degrees of bank angle to adjust course, though. Yeah. All right. Now that we're uh, in this circuit pattern, I'll let you know what we're going to do next. So we're coming around for a uh, approach, and then we're going to do a touch and go. So touch down and then take off yeah. again. Now the approach we're going to do is a, just a visual approach. So once we've got the runway in sight and we're coming down for it, we're just going to watch the runway, judge whether we're high or low or left or right as we come in, okay? Yeah. So it's all going to be visual, not too much based on the instruments. Okay. Now, on the way down, you'll hear the RADOLT callouts. So you've heard them before, yeah. the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. With those, you'll have three jobs. When you hear 200, your right hand will go on the thrust levers. 100, we'll go back to idle. Once you've gone to idle, hands on the controls, and then you're going to flare. So you're just going to pull back a tiny bit, lift the nose up, and then the aircraft should basically land itself. All right, let's straighten up. You're watching the heading bug. Very nice. <laughs> All right, good. Well, if you want to, try and line us up exactly on that heading bug if you can. That's it, nicely done. Now, we want to hold 2,000 feet. You see how we're descending down to it? Yeah. So what I want you to do is start pulling the nose up and I want you to maintain 2,000 feet for me. Now, relax there for a sec. You remember when you were at five degrees, you started climbing? Mm -hmm. See how it's now starting to go back up? Yeah. So use that into sort of your memory bank. We want to go a bit lower than that, okay? So keep going down a bit more. Notice it's a bit tough because the thrust is on a bit of a delay as well. So it's hard to tell where straight and level is. So relax there. Have a look at your VSI. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good. Maybe just a tiny bit lower and then relax. That's enough. Okay. So lock that into your memory bank. Where the nose is right now, that's where we'll go to in future, okay? Okay. All right, awesome. So you can see the airport out to our left at the moment. We're on yeah. downwind. Can you see London out to the front left? Okay. All right, awesome. So on downwind, we go through our descent checklist, and that gets us sort of prepared for our landing. Okay. I'll go through it this time. Next time, you're going to go through it, okay? Uh -huh. So our descent checklist is down on the yoke. Can you see it? Uh, yep. Pressurization, land, alt. So we're making sure the pressurization will stabilize when we touch down on the airport. He throws about 100 feet above sea level, so I've set the landing altitude now. All right, recall. So recall checks our systems. It's the black button that's in front of you. So I'll press it, see how it lights up and then goes out. Yeah. Those lights correspond to the different systems in the aircraft. Any lights stay on, then we have a problem. If any lights, or if all lights are off, then we're good. Yeah. Uh, for example, see how we've got no fuel in the center tank? Yeah. If I turn one of the center tank pumps on, give it a second. Notice how we got a fuel warning light. Mm -hmm. I can silence that, but then the recall will bring it back up. Yeah. Then once I deal with the issue, it should silence. All right, auto brake. So the auto brake automatically applies our wheel brakes. That's up here. Now we're doing a touch and go, so I'll leave it off. Mm -hmm. And then final one is landing data. So this is essentially working out our landing speed. Yeah. I'll do it this time, but I'll run it through with you next time, okay? For the moment, can you make sure we maintain 2,000 feet?
Now, just for your reference, we're going to land at a speed of 152 knots. Correction, 151 knots. We're going to land with 30 degrees of flap, but I'll assist you in getting to that point, okay? okay. Alright, good stuff. Now, we're going to start to reduce the speed. We've got the auto throttles on right now. So what I want you to do is they're controlled up here. See how it's saying speed is 230? Yep. And that's essentially what it's trying to hold. Wind this dial back to 210 for me. Now it's going to maintain 210 knots. As well as that, let's start another left-hand turn. Go for about 22 degrees of bank angle, okay? Okay. So just start rolling to the left. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Now, relax. Because we've reduced speed and we're in a turn, so just relax on your controls. Stop turning in. That's it. Notice how we're losing altitude. We need to pull the nose even higher now. So maybe get it above 5 degrees. Bring it up to about 7.5, so to the next line, that little one. Yep, so keep pulling. That's it. Keep pulling back. That's it. And then relax there. Now, when you completely relax, it'll hold where you've set it, okay? Okay. All right, we're going to start getting our flap and our speed down. So I'm going to bring our flaps down to one. Can you reduce our speed to 190 knots? That's it. And what I'll get you to do is turn to the right for me now. So we need to reduce our bank angle a bit. That's it. And then relax there. That's good. Can you see the airport way out in the distance with yep. the two little red lights? We're going for the left-hand runway, so the left-hand red light. We're coming around pretty good for it but we need to put the nose down a bit, as you can see. So, yeah, start to push it down. Maybe go down to 5 degrees now. That's it. Very good. And then relax there. I'm going to get our next stage of flap and speed down. And then focus on the runway. Now, you know how we said that's where we want to look to line it up? Yeah. I want you to line the runway up with that right now, okay? So it should be a little bit to the left of that point, shouldn't it? Yeah. So we'll keep letting the aircraft turn until it gets there. So let's turn a little bit to the left now. That's it. I'm going to start prepping us for our landing. So I'm getting our landing gear down. Flaps 15, speed 160. As we turn to the left, you're doing good. Good. So just keep watching the runway. Don't take your eyes off it. Mm -hmm. And just try and assess if we're drifting at all. Once again, using that point as a bit of a reference, okay? Now, do you know what those lights on the left side of the runway are telling us? Uh, no? Okay. I'll run it through next time, so don't stress about it. Okay. Alright, so you're looking pretty good right now. I like how you sort of push the nose down. You felt that you were getting a little bit high. So we're coming down on our approach path now. All right. Now I'll tell you, we're getting a little bit low. Yeah. So just bring the nose up a bit. There you go. Okay, when you're ready, do you want to get our flaps down to 30? So there's that other little gate. Very good. I'll get our speed set. We need to bring our nose up a little bit higher again. We're still quite low, okay? So keep pulling the nose up. Keep going. Keep pulling. 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 And relax. Good. So just relax there. Let the controls go back to neutral, okay? And it will hold the nose. Yeah. So just bring it back. There we go. All right. Try and line us up. So we need to go a bit more to the right. That's it. There we go. Okay, a little bit more to the right. Okay, we can start pushing the nose down again. So start going down towards the runway. Push, push, push. Push, push, push. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep getting that nose down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And relax. Bring it back to the middle. How's that feel? Good. Pretty good? Yeah. Okay, first call out will be 200. And you'll pop your hands on, okay?
hand on. At 100, you'll pull the thrust levers back. 100. Good. All right, start lifting the nose up. 50, That's it. 40, 30, 20, 10. Very nice. And just let it come down now. Beautiful. Okay, full power. We're going to take off again. So push it all the way forwards. All the way, all the way, all the way. There we go. Steering with the rudders. And rotate. Let's get back up in the air. So both hands on the controls. That's it. Just pulling the nose up. And once again, let's aim for 15 degrees, okay? That's it. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. That's it. And then relax. Alrighty. Let's get our landing gear up. That's it. Let's get our flap up to five. That's it. Let's start a nice big left hand turn, okay? Good. Relax there. And what I'll get you to do now is push your nose all the way down to five degrees. All right, awesome. All right, relax. Breathe in, breathe out. Touch and go done. So yeah, quite a few steps there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you did good though. Um, so you can see it's a little bit deceiving coming down on the flight path how high or low you are. You saw that we came in a little bit low, but then we had to adjust it a little bit, okay? So those lights on the left side of the runway, we'll use those to assist us for the next landing. Okay. Essentially, they're called our parpy lights. There's four of them, and they can either be red or yellow. Think of red as crash and burn, so we're too low. Yep. White or yellow as sky, so too high. Okay. What you don't want to see is all red or all white. You want to see two reds and two whites, so about half-half, okay? So if you start seeing it go red, what are you going to do? Pull up. Pull up, good. And if you start seeing it white, you need to push the nose down a tiny bit, okay? All right, awesome. Now this next one's going to be a full stop. So everything's going to be exactly the same all the way down to the touchdown, even the 200, 100, all of that was perfect, so we'll do that again. When we touch down, though, that. reverse thrust. Yep. Easy as. All right, good stuff. So when you're ready, I'll get you to roll out onto our heading bug. Okay. You got that in sight? Yep. All right. Let's push our nose down to two and a half degrees. So you see the little line below the box? Yeah. And we're going to basically descend down to uh, 2,000 feet again. All right, cool. So just relax there. We'll let it go down. Now, while that's happening, I'll get you to go through that descent checklist for me. So can you read out the first line? Pressurization, land altitude. Good. So up here, so we'll just verify. Still good, right? Mm -hmm. um, recall. Check. So you remember what the recall was? The that one right there. Yeah. So press it in, release it. Just yep. Okay, lights have come up. They've gone out. No lights. So we're all good. Mm -hmm. Auto brake. So now we are going to use the auto brake. One, two, and three. Think of that as light, medium, and heavy rates of braking. Set that for three. And that will automatically apply our wheel brakes. So what we don't want to do is touch those brakes up the top. So we use the same procedure for landing. Landing data. All right, so this is going to work out our landing speed. So we do that on the FMC. See how you're on the cruise page right now? Mm -hmm. Go back to the menu. Go into our FMC. We're going to go for an approach. Now we select what flap we're going to land with. Flap 30 is pretty common for yeah. a big runway, so double click that button there. It'll set our speed as 146 knots. Then we add a five knot buffer for any wind that's in the area. Okay. So what's 146 plus 5? 151. 151 will be our VREF. So that's what we're going to aim for as we come in. Perfect timing too. We're just about to reach 2,000. So get ready to pull our nose up. So do you remember that position we held it at last time? Yeah. Awesome. So just pull it back up to that position. Perfect. All right. We're about to start slowing down again. So first speed reduction is down to 210 knots. That's it. Now if you look at our map, there's our approach path, if I zoom out a little bit more. 
there's the airport. Yep. We're on the tip of that black triangle, okay? Now get your controls. Start rolling to the left and just watch that nav display for me. That's it. You see that white line that's come up? Yeah. That's our vector lines. So that's showing our flight path over the next 10 seconds. What we want to do is have it curve around onto towards that star there. That's what we're aiming for. Good. So leave it about there now. Quickly adjust your nose up so we don't lose altitude. So bring it above 5 degrees again. That's it. And then relax. All right. We're going to start to reduce the speed and get the flap out. So let's go flap 1. That's it. Speed 190. That's it. How's that uh, turn looking? So we're aiming for this one over here. Oh, yeah. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Let's go flap down to 5. And then speed to 170. Now as we reduce the speed, our turning circle is going to get a little tighter, so just keep an eye on that turn. There you go. Good. Good thing about this is when we look out, we should line up with the runway pretty much right aligned with us. Mm -hmm. So that looks pretty good. Let's let it turn around like that. Let's not go out too wide, otherwise we're going to overshoot. Yeah. Just keep it like that for the moment. Now just watch the runway when it lines up with our sort of uh, point we're looking for. We'll come back out, okay? Beautiful. Okay, once we're wings level, let's get our landing gear down. So out, down, in. Flap, 15. Speed, 160. And let's uh, begin our descent. So I would aim for about 2.5 degrees again, so that little line. Okay, good. Relax there. Eyes out in front. Do you see the lights next to the runway? Yeah. Right now, they're half and half. So that's the picture we want to keep on the way down, okay? So you can just watch the runway for any drift and then use those lights for, you know, whether we're high or low. Mm -hmm. So did those lights change at all? Yeah little bit more yellow, right? Yeah. Which means we're getting a little bit high. Very good. So then relax there, and we'll just see if that changes it. Um, the puppy lights are very sensitive, so you'll find you only need a little bit of adjustment if you've, you know, still got a balance. Yeah. See how it's already gone back? Yeah. Now, if we don't lift the nose up, it'll go even more red, so it'll keep ticking over. So lift the nose up a tiny bit now, okay? And that should balance it. There you go. After a while, you'll start to get a hang of where we feel like we're heading down towards the beginning of the runway. Yeah. Okay, you're doing really good. Okay, we've got three reds now instead of two. So we'll pull the nose up a little bit higher. That's it, and then relax. Okay, when you're ready, flap, 30. Speed, VREF, 151. Speed breakers armed. Four reds, let's bring the nose up a bit higher. Now relax. Now that extra flap should help us as well. Now when we get to about 200, just go and feel, okay? Don't stress too much about the lights. Okay. Push the nose down a bit now. Otherwise we'll get too high. Yep, keep pushing it. We want to hit the very beginning of the runway, okay? Just keep pushing it. We've got three yellows. Beautiful. Leave it there. Okay, hand on the thrust levers. We're going to flare and pull back at the same time, okay? Okay, pull back and flare. Nice and slow, that's it. Beautiful. Okay, don't lift it any higher. Just let it come in now. Approaching minimums. 
Beautiful. Reverse thrust when you're ready. And just steering with your toes, okay? Nothing on the top of the pedals, just all on the bottom. Okay, 60 knots, disengage your reverse thrust. Okay, press on the brakes now. The auto brakes are disengaged. Yep, just hold them all the way in. That's it. Until we come to a stop. Beautiful. Easy hours, right? <laughs> Nicely done.